Alright folks, so it is Siberian here, and I kind of wanted to make this video really quick because I wanted to sort of dispel some of the myths that have been floating around about electric superchargers of late. Now, um, some of you have probably seen videos by Cletus uh, where he basically says that electric superchargers don't work, don't buy them. Um, Mighty Car Mods have done a video where they basically dispel the myth of the electric supercharger where, you know, they basically put one on from eBay and uh, it makes no power, it actually cuts the engine off because it's not providing enough power uh, because of not enough airflow. And they basically said that you essentially would be better off by putting a leaf blower um, on the car to make some additional power. But I take big issue with this because they're spreading a kind of lie that overgeneralizes electric superchargers in general. And the reason why I say this is because all of these systems that have been kind of quote unquote tested um, online have been these 12 volt systems that are essentially these little like bilge pump, computer pumps, um, or sometimes they do actually put a compressor on there and they drive it off of a, you know, electric motor, but then it's using a 12 volt battery source, which of course, you know, those batteries are never going to provide enough current. They're never going to provide enough power to actually compress air properly because at a certain point the air starts acting like a spring and it takes a lot more work to actually compress it properly to a point where you're making usable boost. But the problem is that the way that all these systems that are being talked about, they're saying that every single electric supercharger doesn't work. But here's the thing. So let's take a look at some of these things here. For one, we now have the Audi SQ7. It's been around for quite some time and Audi uses an actual electric powered compressor that's providing additional propulsion for the vehicle. So this compressor, which is driven off of a 48 volt system, is essentially providing some additional boost, making up for the lack of boost down low that the big supercharger has because it takes time for it to spool. So essentially, this smaller supercharger is providing a kind of torque fill down low until the actual big um, turbocharger starts spinning. So you can think of it as basically like turbo compounding. They're using two turbos. One of them is helping to spin up the other and also providing some additional power because it's actually providing boost down low. And Audi is not the only car company doing this. We can also see that Mercedes now with their 2019 edition of the car is actually using what they're calling EQ boost basically same kind of idea they've got an additional bit of horsepower coming in from this motor and so you can see in here that they're saying that they've got this additional um, unit itself which is helping them spin um, basically the electric supercharger off of their 48 volt hybrid system as they're calling it now which again is helping with that torque fill and it's helping spool the bigger turbo thereby eliminating the turbo lag that is normally associated with, you know, kind of bigger turbos. Now, of course, you can say things like, oh, we'll just, you know, use a smaller turbo, right? Because that's going to get you power across the board and that eliminates lag. And the issue there is just like with these kind of electric superchargers, eventually the small turbo is not going to be enough at the higher RPM levels. And at that point, you're not really making the same amount of power as you could be. Of course, we do have variable vane turbos, like the ones being used on Porsche, and like a bunch of them that are used on Koenigseggs and other kind of more expensive cars. But the problem with the variable vane turbos is that they have a lot more moving parts, so they're more prone to failure, and they're extremely expensive. And by and large, you're most likely not going to see these installed in a streetcar. Um, they'll most likely be relegated for race teams and for the supercars or hypercars. So it's not really all that likely that you're going to see that um, in a typical, you know, kind of car combination. What's usually happening is they'll use a smaller turbo paired with a bigger turbo to get you that boost early on. But again, with a system like that, you're adding additional weight. You need to have more intercoolers to help the system stay colder. And at the same time, even with the smaller turbos, there's kind of a limit to where it operates and a limit to how much boost is going to provide. And you're still not going to be on boost immediately on throttle, which is exactly what the electric superchargers provide. Now, again, you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a look at some more articles here. So if we go up here, we can kind of take a look at what's being labeled as the, you know, electric supercharger um, on these eBay sites, you know, whatever, Alibaba, wherever you decide to go. 
and they're basically showing you that here's the compressor, you know, whatever kind of crappy compressor they decide to use. It's got an air filter on its intake, and then it's got some fuse and a little switch to trigger it off of the 12 volt battery. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is not nearly enough power to actually get your car um, up and moving and provide usable boost, and if anything, it's going to act as a restriction on your particular vehicle, pretty much regardless of what engine size you're going to be running. Now, an actual electric supercharger is going to have the cold side of the turbo or the compressor, as you can see here, and they're going to have a DC or potentially AC motor, depending on the um, application that it's being used in. But again, this is going to be at least a 48 volt system. This is what you know companies like Audi are using, Mercedes. Also, there's now a system called Torquamp that you can buy separately and attach to your car where they use a 48 volt battery system where they use lithium, I believe, polymer, LiPol um, battery packs to provide power to the system. And it's being charged off of your car's alternator, but it's not drawing nearly as much um, current or power as you might think. And the charging only happens when you're off throttle, so you're not actually having any kind of parasitic loss um, within your drivetrain, which is contrary to what you would see with a system such as like a supercharger, like a conventional supercharger, where it's constantly belt driven, so you're always having mechanical losses and especially down low where it's not really providing a whole lot of boost, you're just spinning an extra part that's not really adding any benefit to the car at all. Whereas with a setup like this and with a setup such as a torque amp, you really only have to set up a couple of things. You put in the battery charger, you put in the batteries that you need to use, and then you simply attach the particular compressor um, to the intake on your car. Usually that's pretty much all the work that you need to do. And from there on, you're getting usable boost. And typically, these systems are providing no more than 8 PSI, which means that you don't need to run an intercooler, which means less piping, it means less weight. You don't have to run oil lines for cooling the turbo, which means that's another thing you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about blow-off valves because they're not typically providing such boost that they will have um, excess power that needs to be vented at some point, or excess air, I should say, that's getting vented. So you're not running into that issue either. And at the end of the day, they simply weigh less because the batteries combined with this charger are not really all that much extra weight as compared to your conventional turbo system. Of course, again, I'm also kind of generalizing here because there are different lightweight, small turbo setups out there that exist. Um, you know, systems such as the ones that are used on, for example, the new Infinity cars where they have um, water to air intercoolers and they're significantly more portable. Um, of course, the downside there is you do have to have a pump for those systems, but typically they're a little bit lighter than your you know, air-to-air -air intercoolers just because there's not as much volume in this big, hefty um, radiator that you have to end up using, and there's typically a lot less piping because they're a lot closer to where the intake tends to be. But again, you know, these are systems that have been developed for quite some time, and they also suffer from problems with turbo lag because the turbos still need to spool. Now you can see here, if we scroll down a little bit, that um, Mazda is also using a kind of hybrid design where they essentially, what they do is they charge um, a kind of supercapacitor pack and then they run um, some of the power to the engine by using the alternator as also a generator. So the alternator is helping provide basically a little bit of additional power um, to the engine this way. It's not really the ideal setup, but however, it is a kind of mild hybrid setup that you'll be seeing more and more of as time goes on. Now, one of the next things that's most likely going to happen, in my opinion, is that these electric turbochargers are probably going to be kind of nested in between um, your typical kind of turbo setup. So you have your hot side where, you know, that's driven by an exhaust, um, just as it always has been but then you have an electric motor attached to that which helps it spool up down low. That way it's a compact system and at the same time you get to eliminate the turbo lag that's typically associated um, with this sort of a setup while again, you know, keeping the system nice and tight and being able to basically fit in smaller engine bays and from that point forward, that'll be compressing the cold side of the turbo and again, helping you make that power without necessarily having, you know, as much of that turbo lag. Now this particular system I think needs a little bit more work mainly because of the fact that you have a, an electric motor that's right next to a heat source which will obviously make it run less efficient but you can always get around this by doing exactly what Mercedes did in their um, F1 car where they kind of decoupled the system in a way that you basically use a shaft from the hot side to run the cold side of the turbine 
That way you're not getting that excess heat going into the system and helping you achieve basically better power and helping the motor run efficiently. Now you can take a look at some of this stuff here where you can see that Mercedes have actually designed the system for their F1 car. Now in this particular case, the motor does sit right next to the hot exhaust gases, but at the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily matter because what you end up having is good power. So this just makes you know quite a bit of sense. You can kind of see how it works here. I'm not going to be able to actually run the you know the actual video for you here. I don't want to get pegged for you know doing this kind of stuff. But the idea is it's already working on F1 cars, which means it's going to be making its way down to your car at a certain point. Now, as I was saying earlier, the best way to kind of deal with the situation of heat, especially when you're having an electric motor, is to basically decouple the hot side. Um, to the cold side by using a shaft in between that allows you to minimize the heat. Of course, the downside of having the um, shaft in between is that it adds weight, but if you make it out of a composite material such as carbon fiber um, or some other kind of composite, you can also lose some of that weight as opposed to going to something like a steel shaft. So this is kind of how these systems work and they're already in place. So really, you know, when you take a look at these systems as a whole, it starts to kind of make a lot more sense that they actually do work because if Audi is using them, Mercedes is using them, and Mercedes is also using them in their F1 cars, they're going to start making their way to, you know, actual commercial cars, you know, sooner rather than later and the larger numbers that we've seen before. And, you know, at the same time, you can see that these are not the only companies that are actually doing this now. If you take a look at something like Valeo, they have been doing electric turbocharging for quite some time in commercial um, kind of situations. They have their own electric superchargers and they have a bunch of stuff that you can read about on their website. Velio is not the only one. There's also the Aristec supercharger as well. So here's the Aristec supercharger system. And as you can see, you know, these are being used commercially as well. You can see that they show you a pressure graph in here at the same time too. And they have quite a few different information that you can actually read about on their website. This is not the only company yet. You also have this company called Daria. Um, they also make electric superchargers for the commercial sector. So again, this is like the third one on the list now. Here's another one that is, I believe, st.com, where again, they're showing off their electric supercharger system. And you can read about these. I'll put the links in the description below. And last but not least, we have this company called DBS um, that also does electric supercharging with actually a different impeller design. Um, to provide boost down low and to make it significantly better for you know specifically low boost applications there are a couple of other companies out there now that do this i don't have all the details off the top of my head i'll try and put the links in the description as i you know kind of go through all my bookmarks and find them again but the idea is that all of these things work you know they're very powerful they provide boost at low rpm and specifically they're designed to target Right now, streetcars with the, you know, systems like Torque, Amp, and the Arc Superchargers.